everyone today I'm going to swatch for you all these beautiful flash paints that I got now these come in uh, tubes so you can find them in 80 milliliter tubes and also they come in jars these are the small jars they hold 125 milliliters they're also larger jars now the wonderful thing about this paint the reason why I decided to get a bunch uh, more of the colors is that I find the formula to be very very unique and really suitable to my style of painting so these colors have a wonderful matte finish which other paints also have there's a few on the market that have that but from the ones I've tried these ones work the best with pencils which is what I love to use when I'm painting and you can't really do that with traditional uh, acrylic paint I was on the hunt for some uh, gouache acrylic or matte acrylic and from the ones that I've tried this one has been the best and it's also probably uh, the most affordable option for me here in Europe uh, I'm in Austria this is made in France and I can get it from Gersteckel, I think they're called. Gersteckel, yeah, I think so. So this shop, they have uh, shops in Germany and Austria, and I don't know if other places, but they carry this. Uh, if you're in Vienna, I know that also Bursnell also carries these. Today I'm going to swatch all of them, sit back, relax, and I'll show you everything with close-ups, and I'll tell you my favorites. Uh, I'm using my printables. This is one of the pages that come in my swatch printables that you can find on my website. And I print these on watercolor paper and they fit perfectly in my me made little sketchbook from Little Golden Books, which I absolutely love. And uh, I originally created these for watercolors, but mostly I've been using acrylic lately and they work perfectly also with acrylics. So.
take a look with the yellows what I want to say the Naples yellow is it's a nice color but it's quite earthy I would say so if you are if you like uh, yellow ochre for example you can see here the yellow ochre it's uh, more saturated this one just looks like they took yellow ochre and added a little bit of white to it so I definitely wouldn't buy these that's the problem if if I was in store um, I don't know, it looks a little bit deceiving in the tube. It looks a bit more like creamy. Maybe if I add white to it, I can get exactly that Naples yellow shade that I personally enjoy. Uh, but this one is not it. I will probably use this color because I do use yellow ochre, uh, but it's not the kind of yellow, Naples yellow that I enjoy. So I just wanna say that uh, I don't think you need both. I would just get the version um, of yellow ochre basically that you like now these two this is the Japanese yellow light and this is the Sahara yellow um, I really like my yellows orangey so for me this is actually a great primary uh, choice even though next to this one it looks really really orange but if you just want like a primary yellow then the Japanese yellow light is pretty um, primary I would say it's a little bit warmer um, some people prefer to use like a lemon yellow because you can very easily warm it up uh, so they do have that i don't like lemon yellow uh, i just wanted something a little bit less orangey even though i really really love the sahara yellow it kind of reminds me of uh, indian yellow you know new gamboge that type of color and i really enjoy that so i wanted to show you both of them now the vermilion red i really like this color they have more reds in their range i don't really use reds so i didn't feel the need to get any i love the vermilion red it's super um like it's very very orangey which is what i like you get really nice kind of colors um when you mix it with white so i'm sticking with that i don't know, don't feel the need to get more reds now with the pinks they could do better <laughs> I'm missing a little bit something, but the magenta is definitely a good choice if you want a primary. And then if you like your colors fluorescent, you can get the fluorescent pink, which I actually like. It's not as garish as some fluorescent pinks are. This is the Holbein, yeah, acrylic gouache. I wrote it down. And this is their opera. And this one to me is like a bit more garish. This one is not so much. The camera is not accurate because these are fluorescent colors, but this one is still a bit more intense and less garish than the Holbein one. So I think I could uh, enjoy it. And then if you mix it with white, those are really the shade that I like, shades that I like to use. Um, the red violet, I had high, high hopes for it. 
and I'm not sure it seems a little bit more transparent that I would like a little bit streaky um, I was also just like putting it down yesterday a bit in my little um, Hobonichi turned sketchbook and yeah it's not great uh, it doesn't have that kind of opacity that I was hoping I'll have to use it more maybe I need to you know add maybe mix it with some magenta or with a different color but straight from the tube it's not great it's marked as like you know half opaque or half transparent whatever you want to call it so it's not supposed to be completely opaque maybe I need to pay a bit more attention to that and choose colors that are opaque because that's how I like to use uh, this formula. I really enjoy the opacity of it. So those are the pinks. And then if you want, the rose one is, you know, it's okay. It's a lighter pink. Um, and then these two, I think, are really nice. So this one is the Ven Venetian? Venetian pink. And then this one is the rose ochre. And I think these are really, really nice. I think I will enjoy them in florals and also in abstracts. Uh, sometimes I, you know, I kind of struggle to mix neutrals that I like. And these ones to me are like a semi-muted colors. I don't like completely neutral colors. Usually I don't use, you know, a lot of like grays in my paintings. So I'm always on the lookout for colors that are still not super super saturated kind of to balance all of the saturated colors that I use and I think uh, these are nice and I'll show them to you next to the other couple of quite neutral colors that I got that are even these are even more neutral so let's take a look here I just you know sometimes it's so helpful to see these comparisons because you can say oh this is my kind of color or no, this won't work for me. So one of the reasons that I like trying things is so I can help you make better decisions so you don't have to buy stuff you don't like. So now when we look at this, you can see that these ones are have a, quite more color than these two. This one is gray green and this one is pink gray. And I think both are really, really lovely. And I see these as colors that I can use for backgrounds, for maybe blocking out some areas that are like white space where I don't want a lot going on. Um, they're really beautiful. They are, you know, not completely neutral. They're not gray, but they're still muted. And I think they really allow the other colors to shine. So here they are next to each other. You can decide which ones you like the look of. This is pink gray gray green which is gorgeous and I think this one especially will be useful to me because I paint a lot of florals and I like to kind of surround them with greens and it's nice to play with shades of green and also have that more neutral option and then rose ochre and Venetian pink we'll see how much use I get out of them I have to kind of play around and see uh, what colors work for me Let's move on to the blues. The ultramarine is gorgeous. I love it. I use it a lot. Um, I'm, I'll show you. I'm in the process of painting this. And this is just like I'm blocking out uh, the vase in this very, very loose floral. And the color is just gorgeous. I love it. And I'll show you another example. I think I will list this painting in my shop if you're interested. Uh, you can see here, I it, this was like the base color that... Ultramarine was the base color of my vase and then I added other colors on top and I really really like how it kind of peeks through. So I've been using a lot of it and it's just like a really really beautiful ultramarine. Next one is royal blue. I love this color as well. This is just ultramarine mixed with white so you don't um, need to buy it. It's just a convenience color but I think it's beautiful and I'm I really enjoy having it. And then here are a few of the other um, greens that I bought. Um, the other blues in the range are not that tempting to me. I think they have phthalo blue, something like this. Uh, I, I might get though the Prussian blue because I want a deeper one and they don't have indigo 
um, and I just really really enjoy the um, the formula of these so I wish they came out with more colors that I like uh, but this one is nice this is blue ash I think if you do landscapes you might really enjoy this one uh, I see this as kind of like stormy skies uh, and it's a lovely more muted blue I think for me it would also be fun to use it uh, in florals you know for like water bowls that sort of thing uh, so hopefully it will be useful to me and then I got a couple more intense colors with the intention of just having some options and maybe and just being able to play around with turquoises and teals and mints uh, probably adding some white to these so this one is turquoise blue and you can see it's like a very bright turquoise blue I think it's a good uh, description of this color and then this one is viridian I don't know how much I'll use it as it is even though I do enjoy having some you know red uh, dark greens for my paintings so um, I could use that and maybe mix it a little bit with the sepia uh, brown they don't have a ton of they have like some grays but there's not a nice selection of I don't know like a warm gray or I don't know just like interesting dark colors I didn't see uh, maybe I need to order like a dark purple also to have that as an option and then if you mix usually if you mix like a dark violet or purple with viridian you almost get like a black color uh, but it has more interest and more depth so we'll see and then this one is a color I had and I absolutely love it's this one it's the Veronese green hue uh, it's beautiful and then this one I was excited to try and it is really really beautiful it's called water green and it's just let, let's look at the pigments it is yeah it's just like phthalo green with white and here oh here they used a combination of phthalo blue and uh, yellow pigment uh, py3 which I don't know if that has a name I'm sure it has but I don't know the name of it um, so this is like a hue it's not a real viridian but this one you know if you have phthalo green you can make something like this just by adding white I'm guessing also with this if I add a lot of white to it I'll get something like this but I love 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 having this color I love using it as highlights in leaves even though it's you know very very blue um, I enjoy the color so I wanted to have it as like a convenience color and then I always love having uh, like a green gold type of color probably I should have paid a bit more attention this one is transparent I'm not sure how that is going to work for me with these paints um, might be interesting I'll have to try but definitely I can add white and increase the opacity but then it also makes it more pastel like so we'll see and then the sepia brown I'm not a huge brown fan but I thought this one looked kind of okay it's not too orangey so I think it will work for me and I can add, you know, a little bit of blue to it or a little bit of green or a little bit of magenta to kind of change the tone of it. Um, I just wanted a dark color and I didn't want a black or a gray. Uh, nothing there from their range looked tempting to me. So I thought I, was, I would try this. Um, I don't hate it. I kind of like it. It's just not a color that I use a lot, but I'm open to trying <laughs> to use it more. This one is also transparent. So you probably need a couple of layers to get a good um, cover, like if you want uh, an opaque layer, uh, but it's really, really beautiful. Uh, this is a better representation of the color because here I had red underneath. I thought it was opaque, um, but here you can see like a good example. If you layer it on top of a color, it'll still, the original color will still shine through a little bit, at least with one layer. So this is the pure color. And then this one is, it has a little bit of green, uh, red underneath. So you can see the effect, but it's a lovely uh, metallic copper, really, really pretty, quite reflective and really lovely. And then the fluorescent pink, I talked about it. And then I have two whites. This is the regular white. And then I wanted to try the fluorescent white uh, just because I was curious. This one is opaque and then this one is transparent. The tone of it you can see is quite different. This one is more of like a cool, like almost a bluish white or maybe it's more of like a pure white and then this one is almost the same as my cream colored paper so it's I wouldn't say the regular white is pure white you can see 
tell me what you think, make your own conclusions, but that's the regular white and this is the fluor fluorescent white and this one is more expensive. And as I said, you can see it's like more transparent. So these are all the colors that I got. I'm excited to play around with them and kind of create fun color palettes. I've been using the ones that I have uh, extensively and really, really enjoying them. So that's why I wanted to expand my um, color range. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about these, uh, feel free to ask me. As I said, my like I love these because of how you can use pencil on top of these or you know anything i just really really enjoy that matte finish um it just to me it kind of eliminates some of that like plastic feel that i get when i paint with acrylics i really enjoy that thank you for watching i'll see you soon in another video take care bye bye